So we could be seeing highly decorated military personnel coming forward any time now saying, hey, this is what I experienced. This was a real life encounter that that happened to, to me and my squad. Here's all the information. Here's all the reports on it. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Paranormal Portal podcast. I'm your host, Brent Thomas. Thank you all for joining us. And special thank you goes out to all of you who continue to support the podcast and continue to spread the word. Always remember, if any of you out there have experiences of your own that you'd like to share, feel free to email me at paranormalportalradio at gmail.com. Again, paranormalportalradio at gmail.com. And you, too, could be a guest on the show. And tonight we have a roundtable, uh, and we're welcoming back our good friend Sarah Bignell of Yowie Central. And joining us tonight is our longtime friend and uh, co-conspirator as well, Mr. Cade Moya of the Believe Podcast. We do have a, a question here that's from Rachel Gets It Right, says, Theory about Black Eyed's kids, could they be a vessel, tulpa manifested by a dark force guided to cause harm, to their new potential victims, they may be an extension of a master controller. Ooh, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in on this. Yeah, please. Good, because I had a never black answer. kid or like <laughs> encounter here in Australia. I um, honestly feel like this is a phenomenon that would only happen in, in the United States because I had not heard a single encounter oh. at all of a black eyed kid happening in australia at all that's good you don't want them <laughs> they are no I fun anything scarier than that yeah that would be terrifying it, it is it's a diabolical thing and and certainly the the there isn't a ton of of material about them out there or claims and even with that can you believe every one of them probably not i mean most most likely they're just creative writing in a lot of cases, but if they yeah. are real, um, there the interesting part of it is is that there does seem to be some historical precedence in folklore and such for for black eyed people or kids or whatever. Um, that's been there's I just interviewed a demonologist that uh, talked about the that you know he in the discussions he's had with other uh waxes well, and exorcists but and the, a demonologist as well i suppose by extension but he's a catholic priest and uh he has apparently talked to exorcists that have seen people's eyes go entirely black as well as turning into like the snake slits and such and oh. that that's got to be all kinds of creepy but is it, you know, that, that would play, I guess, into what Rachel's saying. If there, is it, again, I, I think tulpas are always, they're always suspect in a lot of this stuff because I, I do believe that sometimes the paranormal can be a manifestation of ourself, maybe some part of us that we don't, we don't engage or we, we, we ignore, we stuff away of most certainly poltergeist phenomena seems to be attached to, you know, uh, well, mostly prepubescent or pubescent girls, but going through those, those enormous changes and all of a sudden, you know, things are going crazy and, and there, it's usually a very short lived phenomena, but it would seem to suggest that we have the ability to project this stuff out. Um, for, for people dealing with poltergeists, I guess they just hit a trigger or whatever. And, and that's what happened. But do you guys think that, that tulpas could very well be at least some of what we're talking about here? I'll let you answer that, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, uh, to be honest, I'm not too sure. Like I, I think we have the ability, and we kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, um, well, at least Sarah did, is that us as humans, we have the ability to manifest a lot of things. And I think the, you know, the human consciousness is incredibly powerful. Um, it's personally, I think the, the human consciousness is what makes us so interesting to to aliens. I think that's why aliens would be coming 
to Earth. Um, but with the with that power of our consciousness, I think it can actually project into reality and create things. It can manifest things. So you know, in in moments of high danger, of high emotion, of um, high conflict, I think this is where spirits can or entities can to attach to to people or, or to certain things and mm-hmm. this is where we can manifest this stuff so um i don't know if that answers that question or not but um yeah that's that's kind of what i think about that that whole thing because yeah i think the the human consciousness is incredibly powerful yeah yeah i think so too i, I definitely do did you have any thoughts there yeah, no, I, I, I totally agree with you. I, I think we're, and I, I have a feeling that a lot of the, a lot of the, 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 the way our society has been constructed in, in that we, you know, so many people work such long hours, Monday to Friday. It's a grind. They often don't like what they're doing. Um, uh, you're so destroyed by the time you get home, you just flick on the TV, um, and, and vegetate for the evening or, or over the weekend. And I, I it's dumbing us down. And mm. I think we spend so much of our time completely disconnected from our spirits and from our imaginations, from, from the other world. Uh, we, we, we don't manifest the best things that we, we, we're not aware of one, that power and we're not using it. So we're not, you know, we're, we're, it's just stagnating and atrophying in a way. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so I, I think, yeah, I, I agree. We have incredible powers of manifestation. Um, our imaginations are, are limitless, but I don't think we, our lifestyles are always geared up to, to support that. And so we end up manifesting a life that's not a happy life. Um, we yeah, end up absolutely. manifesting evil, evil entities and yeah, go, go, okay. Yeah, no, I agree. I think it's, um, we, we live a very distracted life these days and you just have to honestly look at anyone out in public. They are glued to their phones and <laughs> reality is completely different to, to what it was 20 years ago. It's people are, are working longer. People are working not necessarily harder, but you know, there's, there's less, I guess, free time because we are constantly taking in information and influence and opinions almost every second of the day with the, the, you know, the access to social media, because the, the thing that you're doing in your free time is just consuming more and consuming more opinions and consuming more, more data. It's, it's so easy to be distracted in this, in this modern day, in this modern age. And it doesn't surprise me that these things can just manifest by accident because you're not paying attention to what you're doing. It's so easy to go down those uh, those slippery slopes of, you know, oh, the world's against me and the world hates me, and then bad things start happening to you because you're manifesting that. Yeah, good point. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I, yeah. I think that I think that what when I was saying earlier, like we we are you know certainly capable of a lot more, and and I think everybody here agrees with that. Um, we, we all seem to be aware that we are more than just these, these meat suits that we're running around in, um, and, and our nature is much more robust and, and magnificent, but we've, we've been so conditioned to live in these, in, in these shells and in our, in our five senses that, that, you know, everything else, well, <laughs> that and our calcified pineal glands, I guess, doesn't <laughs> probably help, but yeah, we got a lot of work to do for sure. But I, I think this stuff is is magnificent in that it, it it keeps us looking because I, I think what Cade's saying is right. We're, we're constantly being encouraged to look for the next news story or the check of the updates on what's going on in, in any number of tragedies around the world. And, uh, and it keeps us in this state of consumption. But I, I think that we are certainly capable of so much more it's just we've been we've been sold a, a bill of goods on that one. So I, I think that's that's pretty amazing. Now earlier, Cade, I wanted to get back to this a little bit because you mentioned you you touched on this a little bit when we first started the show. 
and that is uh, the the disclosure. So, do you expect that someday all the governments of the world are just going to say, "Hey, guess what? There are UFOs. They're here visiting. We don't know what they are, but uh, you know, buy extra bread. I don't know. What do you think?" <laughs> Uh, buy extra toilet paper. Um, <laughs> that's for pandemics. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, I don't know if the government's going to have a choice at the end of the day because I think the there's so many people out there doing genuine good work in that whole field and a lot of people in um, positions of power uh, really taking the, I guess, the 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 leaps forward in that that the government has to keep up or they're going to lose control of that situation. Mm. So for in the sense of, are we going to get disclosure? Probably what, what that looks like. I have no idea. Um, personally, I think we've already kind of got a sense of disclosure going on with the, the U S government really coming out and saying, yeah, you know, UFOs are real. We don't know what they are. There's every chance that these are off world vehicles, um, in my opinion, you know, that really kind of says everything that it needs to, to say. Um, the, the fact that the, and I don't know if this has been pushed through. I think it has, but your center is putting through a whistleblower. Um, uh, I, I don't really know the terminology for it, but basically the, the green lighting it to be safe for whistleblowers to come forward with UFO encounters and UFO reports and things like that. So we could be seeing highly decorated military personnel coming forward any time now mm-hmm. saying, hey, this is what I experienced. This was a real life encounter that, that happened to, to me and my squad. Here's all the information. Here's all the reports on it. So, yeah, I think I think the the, the government really doesn't get a say in in disclosure anymore because we're going to get it from left, right and center. We're going to get it from the general public. We're going to get it from people in power. And we're going to get it from uh, people in um, those high levels of military that are going to come forward because it's going to be a safe place for them. Sure. Uh, but it is it is kind of funny um, that that suddenly this knowledge has started coming forward, even without that. I mean, it started kind of hemorrhaging through with the, you know, the of course, the, the Tic Tac videos and all of that. Um, I, I, I think I think honestly that that was the disclosure that that we can expect. Like any time a, a, a military entity says, "Well, you had these things buzzing the ship. We don't know what they are." You know, I, I think that's just as well as saying there's little green men on the moon. You know, I mean, it, it's it's it seems to be that once that happened, it really did kind of crack the seal on this, and and it was really kind of observably funny in that prior to that, prior to that one admission, you'd see the news reports and, and it happens about Bigfoot reports too. It's just this, this comical footnote. It's like, well, we're going to go over to Jim who's over in Bucks uh, County yeah. where people saw a flying saucer, <laughs> you know, and they, <laughs> they do it in this, this chuckling demeaning manner, but Suddenly, now those same With anchors the next are like calls music backtrack. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And suddenly, now those same anchors are like, "Yeah, we're going to go to Jim, who's talking about people seeing lights over in the sky in Bucksaw County." <laughs> so it, it it's redefined the delivery of that information for whatever that's worth. But um, do you think that dis- disclosure is even really necessary past that point, though? Like Sarah, do you think that we need? A government acknowledgement anymore? Um, I personally don't. So I, I, I guess I don't really care what other people think, um, and I'm I'm not that fussed. It's the same. It's the same way I feel um, about all of this stuff. I I, I used to really want to push for official recognition of all of these things, but in my area of expertise, official recognition of the Yowie and of Bigfoot. That that's what I wanted to prove to the world. Um, I, I feel now a little bit more, and the same with for UFO disclosure. Um, it'd be nice if they acknowledged it, so people, society, the people who are seeing them, don't aren't traumatized thinking that they're crazy or something that's happened and that they must be delusional or they must, you know. So to be official recognition disclosure would be good in that sense. But on the other hand, 
who cares what the government thinks anyway? Like, <laughs> they just need to get on with running the country yeah. um, and leave, leave the important stuff to us. <laughs> yeah. You know, but I did hear the other day, I've been hearing this recently, that uh, some of the people who are pushing for disclosure are controlled opposition and the whole the whole purpose behind UFO alien disclosure is to set up a fake alien invasion mm. that fear and panic in society and enables then society to be more easily controlled and manipulated. And, and this is being orchestrated by um, some very uh, elite group of a cabal of people. Um, yeah. I've, have you guys heard of that? Go ahead, Kate. Yeah, I um, I love conspiracy theories. I <laughs> I love them, but I never believe them because <laughs> I think conspiracy theories can be like super dangerous, um, especially for for those who are too too willing to believe. Um, and and social media is like a bloody great example of that. You look at like anyone's uncle or auntie on on Facebook; they're the number one conspiracy theorist usually going around. Um, but yeah, it's, <laughs> to be honest, I think like I, I, I'm all for conspiracy theories like that, but I think honestly, the governments really have no idea yeah. and they're probably just almost as clueless as us at the end of the day. Um, like I'm sure there's a handful of, you know, highly selected people who, who know the, the real truth and, you know, they're always a step ahead. Um, but yeah, I don't know if the, the whole um, conspiracy theory that they're using it to control us would would work because, I mean, we kind of just went through a, a huge world pandemic. I can't say the word on YouTube because I don't want uh, <laughs> friends' uh, channel to get demonetized. Um, but that, that really did show, like, how ineffective a world under control would be, mm. so to say, especially here in Australia. You know, I yeah, major toilet paper shortages everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's there's people now that are sitting on garages full of toilet paper, not sure what to do with them. <laughs> so eating lots of taco bell. Yeah, yeah, exactly. because I would hate for aliens to come down to Earth and, you know, take us over, you know. We all work too hard for what we have and the life that we've got to have it just taken away by space assholes. Now, I, I do have to, to ask you guys, uh, do you think that there is a, a risk from these beings from the stars or from wherever they come from? Uh, yes, in that there are good and bad beings uh, throughout our universe, including on our planet. Mm. Um, I think they're already here. I don't think, uh, from what I understand, I'm not an expert, but um, from what I understand, uh, the human race was created by aliens. There are aliens living am living amongst us that that look human but aren't really, um, and some of them feed off us, whether it be energetically or, or or other other ways. They take from us, and they want something from us, or they want something from our planet. Mm -hmm. um, so, definitely, we should always be alert. Uh, but not alarmed. <laughs> we should always be alert that someone is trying to, that, that there are good forces and bad forces. So to, to answer your question, Brent, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think that okay. they're all, um, they're all benevolent beings that have our best interests at heart. Sure. What do you think, Cade? Yeah, I agree a hundred percent. I think it would be, uh, borderline foolish to, to think that, you know, every, colony from space if that is where they're coming from um is always going to be peaceful you just have to to really look at human history to see how that that kind of plays out for millennia um and you know people will probably argue that yeah but aliens will be 
so much more advanced than us in, in, in every single way, including the the sense of they don't need to dominate us. We might just be ants to them. Sure. Um, but again, you know, that's, that's complete speculation. And, you know, you, at the end of the day, those, those people have no idea. They're guessing it's a wish. It's a great wish. I, I want that wish too, <laughs> because I'd hate for aliens to come down to earth and, you know, take us over. You know, we all work too hard <laughs> for what we have and the life that we've got to have it just taken away by space assholes. <laughs> um, but suck. it's, yeah. uh, yeah, it totally suck. It would be the worst thing ever. Um, but, yeah, at the end of the day, I think, you know, you you really have to always expect that if something's coming from somewhere else, that there's always a chance that uh, they're, they're coming for ill reasons. I mean, uh, a duck could want to take you out for the sake of it. You know, ducks are great creatures, but, geez, you get a duck on a bad day, it'll take you down. <laughs> Especially if it's a goose. They're serious. Yeah. Seriously scary geese. <laughs> Kate, did you need to talk? Do you, you want to share? <laughs> uh, no, no, I... <laughs> yeah, geese are assholes too. <laughs> oh, no. Go on, Phil, okay? Phil. <laughs> no, no to self. What, what, what about you, Brent? What do you think of it? I, I think that, that if... My, my belief is that this is these these are super super advanced races. I think that they are you know possibly millions of years more advanced than us. You know the whole the whole idea. You know we don't know how advanced they are from where we are, but knowing what we can observe that they do, it's well beyond what we're capable of, as far as I know. Uh, then of course there's the whole are there reverse engineered aircraft or whatever, maybe. But the thing is is my my big contention with it is if these are super advanced races, why wouldn't they have already done this? Well, I mean, they could have uh, taken over the entire planet in the 1800s with, you know, with probably three vehicles, you know, they could have just come and, and scared everybody into oblivion and, and done it. Why, why are they waiting till we have bigger sticks to use against them? You know? So my, my, my question is this, why, why did they, if they are really bent on our destruction and if they are actually here, why are they waiting? Why are they waiting until more information comes out? And, you know, because I'm sure they, they would know that awareness is powerful. And, and by us having awareness and a growing understanding, um, you know, we become more dangerous. So that's what I don't understand. Um, and I'm not saying they couldn't be, or there couldn't be some that are, um, whether there's some intergalactic council that people, some people have suggested that they keep it all in band, you know, checks and balances, or if they're just here, maybe we're just the the cosmic Seven Eleven. They just kind of swing through and, you know, go to the <laughs> look at the wildlife and, uh, you know, fill up the tank and head out. I don't know. It's just, I guess I don't know for sure, but it seems to me that if if they wanted to wipe us out, there's not a darn thing we could do. You know, we would just be wiped out. So I have to believe there's something else going on here. Um, hopefully that, you know, if we are indeed like, uh, as suggested, we are, we are, we an engineered race. Well, then they made us if that's the case. And, and obviously they kept us around. So there must be some, some higher purpose for all, for all of it. If that is indeed the truth. And I don't pretend to know, but those are my thoughts, I guess, in a, in a bucket, <laughs> I can't say in a nutshell, cause I haven't shut up for about five minutes here, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> Just that was one big nut. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even touch that. You know that. I can't even do anything with that now. <laughs> I'll just leave that there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, don't think they, I don't think they want to destroy us. I think that that might be, uh, and these are just my thoughts again, I, I'm not, I don't think they necessarily want to destroy us. They must be getting something from us or from sure. our planet. That sure. they, but they like keeping us um submissive and subjugated and, and, and under their thumb. There, there is, as you mentioned, I, I also have heard talk of a galactic federation who, who keep everything under control in the universe and they they wouldn't allow uh, alien races who meant us any harm to be able to come here and, and, and rape and pillage and, and do whatever they want. There are... Forces for good that are preventing preventing them from doing that. Sure. Um, 
I mean, yeah, I mean, if they wanted, yeah, if they could destroy us, they could quite easily have done that. And, and you've got a very good point, Brent. I mean, yeah. why would they wait until, you know, until we've got bigger sticks? Yeah. <laughs> Get us, yeah, they could have got us, you know, several tens of thousands of years ago right. and wiped us all out then before, before we had nuclear weapons. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's the curiosity about it, and and I don't know. Now, Kate, I know you've you've had a sighting yourself, and of course I have. Sarah, have you? Uh, UFOs? Yeah, yeah, I I did. I have had one, okay. uh, and I was a young girl, uh, maybe about fifteen, um, fourteen or fifteen, and I was riding my bike. Um, home with some friends near a, a sporting field, an oval, and we noticed up in the sky something that was travelling across the sky in the shape of a cigar that had lights all around the edge of it that seemed to be kind of turning around. Like, like It was almost like it was a disc shape, but you could only see the side and there were lights mm. moving around as though the, the lights were moving around. It made no sound. Um, wasn't an aeroplane, um, was traveling not super fast, but, you know, sort of mm, across the sky. Mm -hmm. Um, not, I I find it really hard to estimate distances, particularly in the sky. So I've got no idea how high it was, but it was, we all saw it. We all didn't know what it was. Um, it wasn't a weather balloon. It wasn't anything like that. Um, so yeah, I, I have seen something like that. And my brother saw something very similar too. Um, he was scared enough to uh, jump off his push bike. Um, this is another occasion, but he jumped off his bike and hid underneath a car, oh, a parked wow. car, because he was wow. so frightened of what he saw. Yeah. Um, so yes, that's, I have seen one, but um, yeah, it was a long, it was a long time ago. I'm ready for another one. I'd like to see another one. If the, if, if the aliens are listening, <laughs> I wouldn't mind seeing another one. So you can show, show yourselves to me if you like. I'm ready. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I think, I think I probably the number of people that are seeing these things is growing. I think this is one of the phenomena that I think seems to be pretty, pretty fair to say that, it, that whatever's going on, there seems to be a lot more activity or people come. Well, I mean, obviously people are coming forward, but there really is more going on, I think, in the skies than ever before. Would you guys agree, Cade? Yeah, absolutely. And and not only is there more activity going on, I think there's just more eyes on the sky now. Um, I think a lot more people are obviously aware of what UFOs are. Um, it still boggles my mind how it's not the biggest news story every night. Right. Um, but, yeah, I think I I think there's just way more public awareness about it. There's way less stigma about it. And uh yeah, I think genuinely people are just looking in the skies more now because if uh if you're more open to to seeing a UFO, uh you who knows, you might you might actually just wish one into existence yeah. if you're into C five and all of that. <laughs> oh yeah. Isn't that Stephen Greer's thing, C E five? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Well played, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. I, I've actually been keen to try that. I know Gary Lynn, my my AYR team buddy, um, he he uh, does, he gets together with people and, and does the CE5, that, oh, cool. that contact. They meditate together and uh, he's had some interesting results. I, I, I couldn't. I couldn't tell you about them off the top of my head, but sure. uh, you should get, get Gary to tell tell you uh, his experiences one day. Um, so yeah, there, there's definitely there's there's people out there attempting contact, um, and I wouldn't mind having a go at that myself. But I do. I did talk to um, um, Damien Douglas, who runs a C five and alien focused groups in in Brisbane, I think, or, or, or Gold Coast, near Gary. And uh, he he told me of, of an experience that he and his wife had where they, along with a, a large group of people from all around the world, were meditating and attempting CE5 mm. and a very um, powerful, strange being manifested itself uh to Damien's wife and to other people. And it was actually quite a dangerous 
situation. Um, oh, I, I, yeah, it it wasn't a good being. It was it was a bad being, and and so you have to be. I think, like with any of this stuff, you have to be really careful who you summon, um, and and what it what you need to be very clear what your intentions are and who you're actually intending on making contact with, because uh, it can go it can go wrong. I suppose I never thought about that, but I guess I guess if you're if you're calling out there blindly, then it's kind of like a Ouija board at that point, right? Like you're just calling whoever's answering, and you don't know who's picking up the phone. Wow. I'd never thought about yeah. that. You're right. I guess you'd have to have a pretty clear objective and, and hopefully, you know, they say energy follows intention. So that would help to guide it or steer it at least. But wow, that's, that's phenomenal. He, he said he was looking at him once and talking computer tech stuff. And this guy's like his face seemed to change. He looked reptilian for for a moment. <laughs> did you, did you get a description of that, or did you hear what it looked like? Uh, I, I'd have to. I can't remember now. I spoke sure. to him quite some time ago. Um, I can. I can I can look it up and let you know. I'd have sure. to, I'd have to double check and 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 re-listen to that interview again to let you know. Well, the, the, you know the reason I'm I'm wondering is because there are the the claims, of course, that they're they're here and that not only are just some here, lots of them are here from different reaches of, of the galaxy allegedly, and and I find that really interesting. Uh, I I guess they're all able to blend in just fine through whatever maybe technology or or psychic overpowering of our senses or something, but you know, it just makes you wonder <laughs> how much are we missing here? You know, that's the part that really boggles my mind with all of this. It's like every time we get into this stuff, it's like, there's more stuff we don't know. Oh, okay. We don't know about that too. Wow. You know, we're, we're, we're like, we're like the window, window lickers of the universe here or something, you know, it's like, what yeah. in God's name. I don't know. It's it. And that's, do you think that there are many different races presently here? Whoever wants to I, feel that. I suspect so. Okay. I was talking to someone when I was buying my, my new computer recently. Uh, I was talking to the salesman and he, and this is in a, a tech shop, and he was giving me a contact number of someone, of a, of a computer technician, a computer geek who could set my new computer up with all the stuff that I needed on it. Mm-hmm. And, um, and he said, this guy is so strange that, he, he said he was looking at him once and talking computer tech stuff, and this guy's eyes, like his face seemed to change. He looked reptilian for for a moment. Oh, um, yeah, I've I've heard reports from several different people of encounters where they're talking to someone and that person's face for just a split second turns into something else oh. <laughs> um, that that doesn't look human. So. Yeah, I, I I definitely think they're they're amongst us. If if those reports are anything to go on, um, I did hear someone say recently that the royal, the British royal family are all reptilians. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I don't know how how seriously to take that or not. But apparently the Queen's an ancient shape shifting entity. Um, I went okay, right. <laughs> I, I don't know what to say about that one. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't how, know. How pissed would you be with your partner if you found out that they were actually an alien and just hid it from you forever? <laughs> 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 I, yeah, that would be that would be a tough one to get over. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and another story. Some, someone, well, it was along the same lines. There was a lady whose husband. She discovered that her husband. She suspected he was an alien. Like he would, he would walk out of the door and come back in, but he'd be his eye color would change or his height would change. Um, <laughs> yeah, yes, oh, really, no. really spooky. Such strange stuff happening in the mirror. Um, <laughs> lots of very strange things happened to this lady, and 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 she she'd, she actually reached out to Dean Harrison. 
Um, he tells that story really well. Um, but there, there were lots of very strange things that this woman reported that you, you, yeah, her, her husband and the son were both aliens, I, she thinks. Oh, wow. That's wow. a that's a yeah. tough one. Okay, because so, here's here's the thing: if they are here, would they be intermingling with us? Maybe. I, I mean, there there's certainly got to be a possibility about that. But how bizarre does that sound? Just to hear that right now. I mean, it's just to hear that. I'm thinking. I mean, the looking at it from the paranormal interested part of me, and then the logical part of me are, are like uh, they're like having a thumb war right now. Going, what do you do with this? I mean. That certainly sounds like somebody's. It. I don't know. I don't want to ever put anybody down because, of course, if they if they believe that they're having this experience, then that experience is very real to them, and that's of course very, very scary. And and I I don't know. I'm. But then again, how do you how do you quantify that? How do you how do you objectively look at that without thinking? Well, I mean, we don't really know the person. So you don't know what is she dealing with and what is there a history of issues in her family that, you know, and, and so all of these real tragic things start coming to mind because initially I'm thinking, oh, my God, that must be a, a you know, really bizarre, wild thing. But first of all, what if it is real? And then second of all, what if it's a, a mental illness? And then that's very sad, you know, you know what I mean? That's yeah. that's kind of the juggling yeah. match that we're all in here because we we are it's incumbent upon us to take these these claims and and quite honestly even my own stories i i for a long time i wouldn't tell anybody because it just sounds like well who the hell's going to believe this you know mm-hmm. what objective person is going to hear what i'm saying and buy into it and and yet i've been met with very understanding people every time i've shared my experiences i'm very grateful for that but this woman is obviously very tormented by whatever's going on and and so you have this 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 the scales going on well is it is it legitimate or is is something really wrong happening for this woman and you know what do you do with it and that's i guess the hard part with yeah it's a balance yeah and i I go into the same mindset actually it's because you you really do have to because you know um unfortunately you know mental illness is you know highly connected to a lot of the topics that we do talk about and you have to take a a very serious approach to it in in that sense there because of genuine real life implications that come from these types of things Mm -hmm. um but then my mind also goes to really really dumb areas like um imagine traveling all the way across the cosmos and you're a human who has a job in a warehouse that just pushes paper around all day hypothetically like sure how how does that life change happen to you? Like you go from traveling the stars to traveling the roads down to a warehouse. <laughs> Scrubbing your animals or something, yeah. It's like you drew the short straw. That guy drew the short straw. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, I don't know. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. What would be the point? That's yeah. true. Yeah. I guess, I, I don't know. It's That's the hard part. That's the juggling juggling match of all of this because I think we have to – as having our own respective shows, you have to come at it with, with compassionate ear because I, I'm not fit to judge whether that person is being legitimate or not, but it's a heck of a heck of a claim. And that, and that's the other side of it. Because if, if ever I was sharing my stories and somebody went, okay, time for your meds, you know, you, you've gone, you got to get some, ne- get some rest or something, but I wouldn't blame them because it's hard to go from, you know, basically zero to 120, you know, because you're, you're going from the normal to the absolutely abnormal. And, and that's a, that's a hell of a journey for anybody to take. And so uh, I do believe that we've come a long way in that regard though, that we, we, there is a much more willingness among people to at least have these discussions now, which I think is powerful and important, but, but it is the hard part of it, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. And you th- and I start to think okay so how how much of what's considered mental illness uh and psychiatric diseases and conditions how much of that is actually this person is experiencing things that we can't explain it's not that they 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 have schizophrenia for example or or they they're having psychotic delusions um 
I st- I've started to think, okay, how much are we misdiagnosing as mental health issues yes. and, and, and medicating people for that um, when really something else altogether is going on and that person doesn't need to be medicated at all. That's actually making them worse. Yeah, uh, We just don't understand what's actually happening to them. Yep. And that, that really leads into like what I, I said like at the start of the conversation, like I, someone in the chat said, I had no idea what Kev was talking about when I said this, but the whole paranormal, but happening on a psychic level, just to you. Yeah. No one else in your house experiences this. So, you know, by yourself, you're freaking out over things that appear to you, but aren't appearing to anyone else. And, you know, those are all the classic tropes of going off the spectrum, you know, you're going, you're losing your mind essentially. Right. Yeah. That's, that's a, a huge thing because I, I think we've all heard the stories of, of people being in groups, like even, even paranormal investigating. It's like, Oh my God, did you hear that woman scream? And everyone else is like, no. And, and, <laughs> and, and, and I, and I do think that the interesting thing that is that's one of those phenomena that seems to jump all of the, all of the different phenomena is that is the, is it is it a telepathy? Is it that spirits are telepathic and can project that into our head? The Bigfoot mind speak is another example of well, is that you know is that able to be projected to us? And then the UFOs, uh, the, the people believe that they're communicating telepathically with these beings. So that seems to be a real common thread through all of this phenomena. Is that it can be aimed, I guess, and it can be given to just one person. But you're right. What does that one person look like then to the rest of the people that aren't experiencing it? I've often wondered and, and, and tragically wondered how many asylums are, are occupied by people who have just been tormented by something dark, you know, but yeah. of course it looks like madness because nobody else can understand that situation. That's, yeah. that's yeah. horrible. Ooh. Yeah. And it was such a, a mind blowing moment for me when, you know, that I got educated about this because it's that exactly what you just covered there, Brent. It's how many people have been affected in such a poor way and treated in a poor way because of this. And mm-hmm. their complete lives are ruined because no one else is experiencing what they're seeing. Yeah. I mean, think exactly. of that. Go ahead, Sarah. Oh, I was just going to add, I interviewed someone who saw... Uh, he was out camping with his, with a group of friends and he saw, he, he sort of moved off to one side to go to the toilet and, um, looked up at the sky and this massive UFO that took up the whole sky appears to him. Sort of, he sees one light and then, then this circle of lights in the, sh- in the shape of like a C sparks up and then, uh, an inner circle of red light sparks up, and he said it was as as huge as a rainbow, like a massive thing. Wow! And the, and, and and no one else saw it. He yelled out to these guys, "Hey, did you? Are you looking? Look at this! Look at this!" They couldn't hear him, and they didn't see it. Wow! So you know, and he's he. I I believed him. I, I sure. And he he just, he's not. He's not um, someone who's been diagnosed with a mental illness or, or anything like that. Just a, a normal, normal guy like you, like you and I, and like, like all of us. So, um, yeah, I think there's a lot. Well, even even uh, um, someone was telling me the other day that they could see orbs, but that their husband didn't see them. Didn't see them at the same time. She's like, "Yeah, it's right there," and he's like, "No, what do you mean, you idiot? There's nothing there." So it would it's it would be a particular um it would be a heavy burden if you, if if you're seeing and experiencing things that like that that you can't explain yeah, um yeah. but that but and and other people are right there and they're not experiencing the same thing at the same time it would be a, a, a very distressing and confusing uh, experience yeah absolutely yeah. yeah I think so too and and I I think about like uh, child psychics and stuff and how how tormented a lot of them are. And, and of course, the movie The Sixth Sense was a, a dramatization about the, of that, but I don't think it was much of, an, of, a, of a stretch, you know, because it, just think as adults how, how unnerving and incredible these events are and then, and then impose that on the mind of a child. And, and what do they endure? These, like jazz, I'm sure, is 
understands exactly that was her experience, I'm sure. Uh, and Deb and, and so many others. Uh, I've you know only seen ghosts myself one time, like a real full body manifestation one time. But most of the most of the activity that I've experienced has been things happening around me, and and of course the empathy, feeling that presence around. But but yeah, that's got to be a horrible thing. Wow, incredible. Yeah, and I do know someone who I interviewed a few times. Um, who who was diagnosed with a, a psychiatric illness and was medicated for it and uh, it it had it ended up not being uh, not not having a psychiatric illness. Um, <sighs> so luckily, he was able to find uh, spiritual guides and healers who could help him get off Good. the the antipsychotic medication that that he was was taking um, and helped him deal with. Uh, it helped him normalize a bit and deal with all the weird stuff that would happen to him. Um, so yeah, I think I think it's happened a lot, mm. uh, which, is, which is even more more reason why uh, why the work that you that all three of us do is really important because we we might we might be instrumental in helping even if it's just helping one person who who. Sure might have ended up going down that path of being institutionalized, being drugged out up to the eyeballs by, by things that don't make them feel well and they can't, you know, function as a, as a normal human being. Um, if, we can, if we can prevent just that happening to at least one person, um, that would be job done as yeah. far as I'm concerned. Yeah, that'd be wonderful. I, you know, I, and I, I certainly, that's one thing I do love about this is that, uh, you know, we're, we we are given the opportunities to be helpful to people regularly, and and uh, I've had many many people reach out to me personally to help them connect with people that can help them with the situation, and and I'm really thrilled. Again, I I don't deserve any of the of the of the thanks for that. It's just these wonderful people that have said, "Hey, I'm here if somebody needs that help," and and I think that's so powerful, and and it's so cool that that we have an opportunity to, to not only report about the phenomenon, but to actually, you know, make a difference as well. So that's an honor, an absolute honor. Absolutely. I, I totally agree with you. Totally. And how good is it when someone contacts you a bit later and says, oh, my God, thank you so much for putting me in touch with that person because now all of this terrible stuff that was happening is no longer happening and I'm happy and uh, life is good. You know, that just yeah. makes my heart just expand and, and, and I get all the warm, fuzzy feelings. It's great. Yeah. Thank you guys for coming on. It's been an absolute blast as always. I, I just love these opportunities to connect and get together and discuss ideas. Thank you so much for having us. Um, I uh, really appreciate uh, being asked. It's so it's such a joy to come on, oh. not only to talk to you, my friend, but to also talk to Kate at the same time. Really cool. Um, I'd love to do it again sometime. Absolutely. Will yeah, be. it was heaps of fun. Yeah, thank you so much for having us on. And uh, thank you, uh, Sarah and Brent, for doing all the the heavy lifting today because I don't know if I Brent you know this but I've had two hours sleep because of a, a very sick <laughs> little girl and um, yeah you guys you guys saved me today <laughs> uh, you did great brother you ever you guys were wonderful and uh, but anyway guys that's gonna wrap it up for tonight's show thank you so much for being here and being a part of the journey. Hi right, guys, thank you so much for joining us here on tonight's show. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please feel free to follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash paranormal portal radio, as well as finding us on Twitter. We're on Twitter at paranormal portal, P O R T L. And uh, we'd love to have you stop by our YouTube page and subscribe and check out our shows there. We got hundreds of shows, journeys into the paranormal portal. So I hope you'll check it out. Check it out, guys. We're over there at youtube.com slash paranormal portal. So hope to see you guys soon. Uh, we'll be back, of course, for more podcasts in the coming days. So we love you all. Be good, be kind, be nice. Take care of each other. Help each other out. Find the magic in every day and remember to laugh as much as you can. Bye.